Welcome to Electro Online. Here we have another video in the series, Can You Believe It? And what we're going to talk about today in this video is the concept of energy equals mc squared, or e equals mc squared as we know it, and the concept that we can actually convert matter to energy and vice versa, energy to matter. So when, when Einstein came up with this equation, he envisioned that energy and matter were two different manifestations of the same thing in nature, and that you could readily go from one form to the other. So an object that has mass could be converted to energy, and something that is energy could be converted back to mass. Now, that was hard to imagine because, for example, energy, like electromagnetic radiation, which is pure energy, the pure form of energy, well, it doesn't have any mass. And so how can you make something that has mass from something that doesn't have mass. It seemed unbelievable. But then we began to discover that indeed there's situations where mass is converted to energy. For example, in the sun, the sun converts mass to energy in its core and that is why the sun produces this enormous amount of energy by converting approximately 9 billion pounds or over 4 billion kilograms of matter into energy every single second. We can do it here on Earth in nuclear power plants. We take radioactive material and we use that to convert matter into energy. And we can create an enormous amount of energy with a small amount of matter. The reason is C squared. C is the speed of light, which is 300,000 kilometers per second or 300 million meters per second. And when we square that, that's an enormous number. So a tiny amount of mass multiplied times an enormous amount of uh, enormous number can form a considerable amount of energy. Now, can we go the other way around? So we already see that yes, in nature and on the earth we have been able to figure out how to convert matter into energy. But can we do it the other way around? Can energy be converted back into matter? So something that you can't touch, that you can't hold, that doesn't have any mass, can actually be converted to something that has mass, like an electron or a proton or an atom. Hmm, yes, it can be done. And we've actually done it in the laboratory. For example, we've taken some very high energy photons, typically in the gamma radiation range, and had it go by very heavy nuclei and caused that energy, that photon, to be converted into two particles, an electron and a positron. A positron is what we call the antiparticle of the electron or the anti-electron and it turns out whenever a particle is produced the opposite or the antiparticle must be produced as well and the reason for that is that different things need to be conserved. These are just some of them. Energy must be conserved, momentum must be conserved, charge must be conserved and boson number and other things such as that need to be conserved but since energy and charge must be conserved you need, to cons you need to produce two particles so that the charge can cancel out. So we have no charge here, and the sum of these two add up to zero charge, so therefore charge is conserved. And the high energy photon, the gamma photon, needs to pass by a heavy nucleus, which can then recoil and somehow then, with the motion of the electron, the positron, and the heavy nucleus, can both conserve momentum and energy, otherwise it couldn't be done. So that's one of the necessary situations in which it can be done. Now, obviously, if you're going to provide or if you're going to produce particles from energy, you need to have enough energy. So how much energy does this photon need to have in order to make, produce these two particles? Well, if we use the equation E equals mc squared, so m is equal to the energy divided by c squared, and realizing that the mass of an electron and the mass of a positron are exactly the same, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms, if we convert that to energy, that is an energy equivalent of 511,000 electron volts. Now, of course, you need twice as much because you need to produce two particles, so you need to, conf you need to produce at least a little over 1 million electron volts. Now, for example, a, a photon of visible light, so a visible light photon, has energy somewhere between, uh, let's say, about 1.8 to about 3.3 electron volts. So a photon of visible light has about that much energy. We're talking about 
a photon that has almost a million times as much energy as the typical photon of visible light. So this is a very high energy photon. And the energy of a photon is equal to Planck's constant h times the frequency, how quickly it oscillates back and forth in a second. Now, the amount of energy required is a minimum. If you produce something with this much energy, it has to wiggle back and forth at about 2.5 times 10 to the 20th time per second. That's a high enough frequency multiplied times Planck's constant, which is defined right here, will give you enough energy to produce those two particles. Now, when those particles are produced, they don't just sit there, they also will shoot off from where they're produced at very high speeds, which means they also have additional kinetic energy. That means that the photon not only needs enough energy to produce the two masses of the electron and the positron, but also to give them the energy to fly away from that location where they were originated at high speed. So typically we're looking at a photon that has maybe two or three million electron volts to produce an electron and a positron. But we have done it in a lab. It is possible. We've shown that it's possible. Matter of fact, I think the person did it got a Nobel Prize for doing so. Uh, but yeah, it's miraculous. It is indeed true what Einstein claimed that energy and matter are essentially two different manifestations of the same thing. It's hard, to it's hard to envision, it's hard to envision that something that doesn't have any mass, such as a photon or electromagnetic radiation, can produce something that we can actually touch, hold, put on a scale, and weigh it, it's attracted to the Earth. Um, it's just absolutely amazing that this is happening, but you can see, nature sometimes is stranger than fiction.